put that in your judgmental pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be recording your assumptions about me and my reactions. And Adam's, right here. Yeah, he's gonna read them out to me. So, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. sorry if you hear little squeaks in the background. It's patchouli. First assumption about Lauren. Yeah. Going vegan was easy for you. Wrong. <laughs> that is wrong. It was, I had researched veganism for like six months to a year before I ever went vegan, but it was not an easy choice uh, for many reasons because I was paleo um, at one point, which was like another diet fad. But even beyond that, like I was just a huge meat eater. Like I loved meat and cheese, but I had it like at every meal. It was also kind of my identity too. I was like that girl who could like eat all the ribs and like eat so many drumsticks yeah. and chicken wings. So basically, yeah, it was my identity as well as I loved me. So no, it was not an easy thing to do um, to, to go vegan, but I'm so glad that I did. I've been vegan for almost four, no, wait, five? Four, yeah, almost four years now, so. So yeah, next. Perfect. Assumption number two. You're a very easygoing person, but will stand up for yourself when you need to. Yes. Well, am I easygoing? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you like to keep a schedule and you like to know what you're doing, but <laughs> oh, like- Oh yeah, that is outside of me. But at the same time, like if it gets interrupted, it's not a huge deal. If it's like sidetracked, cause like most of the time, like your ideas and you're like, what you want to do for the day is like in your head. But if I end up wanting to do something that interferes with that, or like we end up just like going I'm out and planner, doing things. I'm a planner, but I'm not married to my plans. Yeah. But yeah, so but easy going as far as like, I just don't, that's true, I don't really. If we improvise, we improvise, and it's just like, yeah. sometimes we just plan. What was the second it. half? If I will stand up for something. But we'll still stand up for yourself when you need to. Yeah. I mean, that's- I think so. Sounds pretty obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Cool, all right, assumption number three. You don't care what other people think of you, but you like making people happy. True. I would say, this isn't like a true or false, but, <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I do like making other people happy. What does it say? You don't care what other people think of you. Right, yeah. That's, that's a correct assumption, I would say. <laughs> yep, next. Awesome. I would say, just to like, a note on that. I think like, you, you care that people like you and that they believe that your decisions are the right decisions. You just don't dictate your life or who you are based around those things. Yeah, yeah. that speaks truth. Assumption number four. You are a really open person. True. True. That is probably the truest. I'm open. There's nothing that I hide from people. There's nothing that I keep to myself. Um, I probably am too open. I'm actually learning how to like create boundaries with people. But yeah, I'm a very open person. Assumption number five, that you are always so calm and collected. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, the first two weeks of having a puppy was anxiety hey, constantly. I one would have been anxious in that situation. You, for sure, but like. So you completely disagree with the statement then? <laughs> no, no, I just, I just wouldn't say you're always calm and collected. Like when a situation calls for you to like, when it's like super high anxiety and it like, yeah. is, makes sense that, that you would be anxious or you'd be like, whatever, like. I will say. You don't hide your emotions behind a calm and collected person. No, no, definitely not. And the other person said I'm a pretty chill person. I would say yes, like I am a casual person. If that, yeah. I feel like that's like a better way to say like my personality like nothing is really a big deal I don't know I I pretty much wear like sweats almost every day like I don't really care what we do on a day-to-day -day. I'm pretty laid-back but being calm and collected always nah no I don't think so I feel like I can stress out pretty bad yeah, but to give you some credit too in that situation, the collected part, you usually, like when you go into a situation, you usually know how <laughs> I'm it's, collected, but how I'm not it's gonna calm. go, you plan for it. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, I'm planning for the chaos. So yeah, uh, yeah. chaotic and collected, that might be <laughs> more, more the right statement. Uh, assumption number six. Yeah. You're weird. I mean, yeah. You did a whole video on it. Yeah, yeah, I have my quirks, that's for sure. <laughs> yep, I'm weird, it's true. Uh, assumption number seven. You like animals and people think you're funny. I mean, I don't know, am I funny? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's more of an assumption. I think like, you're funny. But people thought you think I'm funny. You think I'm funny, my mom thinks I'm funny. I mean, that's all that really I matters. guess that's all that matters. So I guess I'm funny. And what was the first part? And you like animals. Yeah, I do. I you don't, don't eat them. I don't eat them, so. 
They're pretty cool. All right, assumption number eight. You are so beautiful. Not an assumption, a fact. <laughs> an assumption? <laughs> well, wait a minute, that's the truth. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even read this one all the way through until I made the joke and then wait, they what? made what the joke. Wait, what? What did they say? They, they said, you are so beautiful, dot, dot, dot. Well, wait a minute, that's the truth. Oh, so it's not an assumption. Facts. Oh, thank you. Mwah, mwah. Okay, so assumption number nine. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess um, nine and 10. It's the same person did two questions. Okay. Or two assumptions, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is that you backslid in your faith because you say stuff like annoyed AF. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second is that you don't have any convictions. Sorry, dot, dot, dot. Interesting. Okay, so, well, first of all, let me just say that I think the phrase annoyed AF or like cute AF or whatever, I think it's a like cute and quirky phrase. I don't even say the F word. Um, That's true. So um, even if I do swear, it's really seldom and it's usually if I'm quoting somebody. So yeah, first of all, I just, I just think that the quote or like the phrase is cute it's and cheeky. Of, it's kind of taken on its own meaning. Yeah. Just like LOL or... Yeah, exactly. Second of all, to say that I don't have any convictions or I've lost my convictions or whatever is to say that I don't have the Holy Spirit convicting me, which is to say that I, I'm not a Christian anymore, which is to say that somebody can lose their faith. And if you believe that like someone can lose their salvation, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> so I have been a Christian uh, since I was seven years old and I've been in the Christian business, Christian industry since I was 11. So for almost 15 years now, and it yeah. is a business. Whether you're in the Christian business or you're in the secular business or, or whatever it is, the only thing that really marks it different um, as Christian or secular is the fact that it's imperfect people mm -hmm. letting God work through them to do something that can actually do work for the kingdom. Yeah. Because in any situation, people are people are people. Like, yeah. you can't change an entire industry and make perfect people only function within that or, or say that an industry or business is going to change someone to their core so much that they actually are a perfect person operating within that those walls. Yeah, um, I'd say you'd be pretty hard hard pressed to find anybody that's like a perfect example of anything to, to look up to, to follow, because because nobody is. I mean, nobody's perfect. And even the people that you admire and you idolize, just be careful. Like Adam said, people are people. No matter how perfect or holy they may come across on their chosen platforms, at least with me, I solemnly swear that- I am up to no good. <laughs> I'm up to no good. Um, that I I am me always. I, I I promise I will always pull out the skeletons out of my closet. I'll wear my weaknesses on my sleeve. What you see is what you get and you won't have to worry about whether or not I'm being my true self, whether it's in videos or on Instagram or in my music or on my blog. It's all me. There's no special fixed up version. And I may post things like annoyed AF because one, I do think it's a cute and funny, quirky, cheeky saying, but two, I'm at a point in my life now that I'm okay with weeding people out. I'm really thankful for all the love and support, whether it's subscribers or people who follow my page or keep up with my career. But if you can't handle the journey that I'm on, then you do you, boo. I'm not gonna beg you to stay. I love Jesus with all my heart and only he and I can determine whether or not I backslid. Adam can't even determine if I've backslid. It's only between me and God. The only time I've ever been bullied has been by Christians, unfortunately. And that's that's a sad reality. But I won't let that get in between my relationship with God because people disappoint, but God never does. That reminds me of a sermon that we have been working through this last month in church that talks about how we've been working through um, spiritual warfare. Satan doesn't attack you. Satan mm -hmm. doesn't attack God um, because he knows both of those things are too strong to, to, to really be messed with. The thing that he tries to do is attack the connection yeah. between you and God. The only way for you to be weak enough to be put in a place of adversity from an attack from him would be to disconnect you from God. And so mm -hmm. to allow a situation where people within the Christian industry or people that claim Christianity, mm -hmm. um, for those people to be the people that have bullied you and attacked you and all of that stuff, to allow that to dictate how you view Christianity would be allowing Satan to be successful in that attack on mm -hmm. your connection. Yeah, exactly. Truth. Preach. If anything, I've grown in my faith, not backslid. He has been more real to me now than ever before. So put that in your judgmental pipe and smoke it. <laughs> okay, let's continue on. Assumption what? number 11 and This is the last one, I think. <laughs> okay. All right, assumption number 11. 
Okay, what is it? You love rosé. <laughs> no. No? I don't know. No. Are you calling me basic? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not only basic people drink rosé. No, that's no. Some people have a very refined palate for a for fine, a... sweet candy wine. <laughs> uh, no, I like red and I like white. Rosé is my last choice. But if rosé is, I mean, I like all wine, so I'm not gonna complain if rosé is the only thing at a party. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Thanks for um, typing in your assumptions, and until next time. Yeah. We'll see you later. Later. Bye.